very good evening, everybody, and um, thank you so much for, for joining us. And um, welcome, Yanni and Brendan, uh, as we hope to go through a whole lot of um, questions and answers and to really give you the opportunity to explore all the details around what a return to school would look like. And of course, as we kick off tonight, we kick off fully, fully aware of the fact that there are so many moving parts in what we're gonna be talking about and so much variability that um, we, we proceed in the best faith with the information that we have. And um, we, we, we're quite comfortable that the systems that we're going to be describing tonight have worked really well for us over the past um, few weeks. And so um, we're looking forward to a, a successful start to the new term, but of course, uh, a lot of um, variables in the mix and a lot of time still has to pass between now and then. But the pattern is beginning to, to emerge and we're beginning to get to uh, a point where we are able to, to get some clarity on a number of issues. I have a, a list of Q&A that has been submitted to me by email over the last week. And so we'll, we'll go through all of those. But as we uh, work through these topics, we'll, we'll, we'll cover some of those. And then obviously because there are some uh, school specific things, certainly in terms of back to school. Uh, Yanni and I have been doing quite a lot of work in terms of what term three would look like and we'll ask uh, Yanni to talk to that. And of course, Brendan, um, the prep has been running at a pretty um, considerable capacity and we'll ask Brendan to talk about what uh, term three is going to look like. We'll uh, explore the various quarantine options and talk about what that's going to look like, as well as um, acknowledge the fact that um, we're not sure where the trajectory of this pandemic is going and so uh, what we talk about tonight could conceivably change although our bubble systems that we've we've had running in the schools has been um has been really successful uh, so successful that um uh, we, we we're beginning to be able to um have uh, sort of intra sort of bubble uh, sporting activities and and a much more open environment uh, than at the start as we go along, if you do have any questions, please um, feel free to use the Q&A bar at the bottom. We'll be monitoring it as we go along so that uh, we're able to make sure that we've got all the questions uh, answered. And uh, if we don't get the question answered in this time, we will download all of those Q&As. Um, we, we'll be able to see who they come from and we'll be able to answer them uh, during the course of the next day or so. So um, as we proceed, just some uh, we've been doing a lot of work around um, finding out how travel is going to look like and how we're going to get our, our boys back to South Africa. We've uh, liaised with Department of International Relations, we've uh, liaised with um, officials and in fact um, uh, senior management at OR Tambo Airport to try and understand what the um, airport is going to look like and what the procedures at the airport are going to be like. And we've been working really hard uh, locally to make sure that we have the transport connections either from PE Airport or Johannesburg Airport uh, down to, to Grahamstown to our local quarantine facilities. We're pretty clear that we have some good local quarantine options and we'll talk about that in a second. But um, we're in the process of sending the documentation out to um, people that will be required to get through the border post. Uh, once you, for example, if you were to arrive at Oatambo Airport, there would be an option for a, a bus or there would be an option for an onward flight. And we've um, had conversations with uh, Oatambo how those uh, two options would work. And then um, obviously we would be able to use school transport uh, either from PE or from Oatambo or indeed from uh, the borders, uh, possibly at uh, Botswana and uh, Zimbabwe. We've, the, the, the documentation, we've really struggled getting clarity from government as to what the, the real actual position is. And I think from the email correspondence that's been coming and going, uh, you can appreciate that it's been very unclear. We've worked with some of our peer schools now and they've had opportunity on two occasions to test the, the, the paperwork that we're describing and it has worked successfully. And so 
um, we are confident that uh, that process uh, will work for the boys and um, we'll uh, pick up uh, some of the questions in terms of what happens with accompanying uh, adults in a moment. I'm going to ask Yanni, uh, Yanni, we've been doing quite a lot of talking about what um, term three would look like and what the back to school would be like. Um, bearing in mind, it's still very much in draft format, but I think we've got the broad principles pretty much um, hammered down. Uh, maybe if you wouldn't mind just leading us through that uh, briefly. Thank you, Alan. Good evening, um, parents, and uh, thank you for making time to listen to us. Um, we, we're going to try and give you as much certainty as we think we can, we can offer you, um, but things are changing, and I know that our president is speaking to us tonight at 8 o'clock, um, and he might, um, he might have some surprises for us as well. Um, I think the, the first thought I want to share maybe is, is um, that we've had the luxury now of, of running a full term um, without you, unfortunately, but um, with, with uh, almost sort of half, half the students here. And we've learned a lot um, in the term that we can look back on. Um, one of the things that we've learned was that we've, if you take the traffic uh, that's gone through the san, the sanatoriums and our, um, our quarantine centers, it's actually been the quietest term medically um, in probably in history. <laughs> because um, we've had hardly any problems with flu and with colds. Um, because of the, of, this, of the protocols that we followed for, for, for health, um, and uh, it's it's been an, an interesting experiment to have school uh, school children back and to see what the what the pandemic or the virus looks like and and uh, manifests like in school. So um, I think that's the, maybe the first thing that we've learned is that although the the situation in South Africa around us um, has really um, worsened um, and the the curve is definitely still swinging up, um, the fact that we are a full boarding school meant that we were able to cre create our own um, micro community here um, and and manage that very well um, so that we could bring down the risk right down. So we have now looked back and said, what about the way in which we ran school in the last term? Um, are we going to retain to ensure that we that we keep containing um, the the and controlling the health of our of our children here? And what what can we change? Because our overarching instinct is to try and push the way we do school more and more towards the way we normally do things. So there um, are basically three big big topics there. Firstly, we want to do boarding in, a, in, the, in the way that we normally do it. Um, and uh, DSG parents will know that we had a bubble system at D on the DSG side where we had grades in, in, in houses. So for us, it's going to be going back into um, boarding that is configured in the normal way. So girls will be able to return to, the, to their normal boarding houses. And we will even be able to allow some day girls into the into the boarding houses. Um, college have, have had that 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 um, set up in any way, and and preppers had these, and they will continue with that. So the boarding, normalising the boarding, is the first thing. Then we would like to get children back in class for the whole day, um, in the in the senior school and in the in the college, um, where we had a hybrid system this this term. So it's and that is very much dependent on whether the the over border pupils can come back um, because then we will have most of our kids here and our aim is to have them all in class and then the third one is of course to run sport in a in a way that is as normal as possible so we're really looking at where we can um, rig our sports and offer sports that 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 can that can go beyond um, just physical exercise but actually playing some matches seeing if we can bring um, a competition element into sport again with inter house um, and so on. Um, we will do things like, for instance, um, opening our, our, our aquatic centre again, um, and we'd be quite excited about the sport that we can offer. And the same goes with, with the other extramurals, clubs and societies, um, and music as far as we possibly can. Thanks so much, Yanni. Um, Brendan, would you, um, you mind just filling us in how the preps are looking and, and what term three would look like? Thanks, Alan. Yeah, um, as Yanni says, we've had our boarding options set up not in our normal houses, um, uh, and we've got our grades fours and fives in Griffin, grades sixes in Tigers, and grade sevens in Lions, and we will retain that uh, setup because with the use of common room space, 
uh, in both Tigers and in Griffin, we can accommodate all the boys on return. Um, so we know that we can accommodate every one of our boarders from overseas and those couple of South Africans who haven't returned yet. Uh, we will keep the second half of Tigers open as the quarantine facility. So we're well prepared. Um, we've checked our classroom numbers. We know that we can accommodate all the boys across the grades in the classrooms. Our one query is our second grade seven classroom, which has to be divided into two classes. But that's a timetabling issue and a space issue. And that just moves into either the CCL or the uh, Pottery Center as a second classroom or a third classroom in grade seven. Uh, the timetable will look pretty much as the timetable looks now, which all our parents are used to because most of you have been online in the classrooms now. So that won't change. Um, and as we are sitting, it's closer to 65% now of boarders back and 98% of day scholars back. We are pretty much running a, a full school. So there's not going to be too much change. Thanks, Alan. Thanks so much, Brendan. So, so in essence, of, of course, our commitment that we made right up front when this pandemic arrived, that um, until everybody had had a fair chance to be back at school, uh, we had continued the online a program uh, that still does apply. So um, should something change between now and September uh, where um, borders or, or international travel would be restricted, uh, we would um, obviously continue with the online program and we'd adjust uh, internally to make sure that we're able to, to offer really good quality online value to those people who are receiving it um, in that form. And um, a really good quality on campus as well. So, um, as you can, I just, can, I, yeah, can I just add something about the about the the junior school? I'm omitted to say that the junior school, pretty much like Brendan said, now the junior school DSG will will run similarly to this term, um, where uh, classes that were bigger were split so that we have fewer children in class, um, but for the, for the rest, the school will will run exactly like it is now. Thanks, Jenny, and. Um, uh, as Yanni was talking about, uh, our, our intention is to use the benefits that our bubble system give us and to obviously be cautious in the first uh, few weeks to make sure that our bubble equilibrium gets established and that um, we don't um, go too far too soon. But um, our experience this term has shown us that our systems really do work and they've worked well. And um, we would uh, work towards, um, certainly in, in the college, we've got the summer sports uh, busy developing the, the various protocols. So we'd expect cricket, water polo uh, and basketball or re-basketball is running. We've got soccer running at the moment. Um, and uh, rowing is busy working on a protocol. So we probably wouldn't see the big boats out, but we would see uh, possibly some skulls and um, some degree of intra-school uh, competitiveness. The boys like the, comp we've, we had uh, the touch rugby boys out today. And uh, it's funny, just the energy that it, it brings when you've got some competitive um, spirit uh, going between the boys. And so that's really, uh, we, we're moving our program from uh, uh, an exercise program into a more um, competitive program. We'll go um, around the schools again, just talking about quarantine. So in, the thinking of college, we would, there, there are a couple of options. Um, for students who would want to return during the holiday time, um, and I would, our, our advice would be, we think it's really in the best important interest of the matrix to, to try and make sure that by the time they, by the time school starts, they're cleared of quarantine so that they can get stuck in because they start exams uh, really soon. And it's, it's just beneficial to be part of the main exam cohort. Um, but we have a, a, a setup where we could um, quarantine boys in, um, in, in anywhere around the school during the, 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 the two weeks prior to term starting. And then once term has started, we have a, a process whereby we could uh, quarantine uh, boys for the first two weeks as well uh, as we're phasing in the grades. So quarantine means that um, quarantine means that uh, boys would be in their rooms for their for their study. Uh, we have opportunity to demarcate various fields for them to go and get uh, the exercise that they need, 
And because they would have traveled together for, for such a, a period to get here, we would look to, to cohort groups together. So some of that harder sort of quarantine when boys are alone in their own room without uh, contact uh, can be avoided by just treating the whole group who've traveled from a particular place together. We can keep them together and they can interact together uh, because they will have been in contact for so long that putting them into an individualized quarantine uh, would uh, not uh, really be a, a valid quarantine anyway. So um, those are the options um, for the, the college boys. We've got Graham House, which is a certified quarantine um, venue. And also we have the Graham Hotel. And Graham Hotel has about, well, between the various properties that they own, they have about uh, 65 quarantine beds around the town. So um, lots of, lots of uh, opportunities there. Yanni? Yes, um, so DSG, we, we had two quarantine sites um, approved by the Department of Health um, for over-border pupils. Um, the one is Manana House, which uh, is what we used during the term as well. Um, and the other one is the monastery, which um, can take quite a lot of, of, of students. So um, we are, again, recommending, um, I think we've got seven or, or eight um, matric uh, over-border pupils. So for those um, pupils we're recommending that they, that they try to, to return during the holiday, um, ideally two weeks before that, which means that we will be able to accommodate them in Manana House, which is very comfortable. They will each have their own room um, and they will be able to, um, to prepare for exams there and have you know, free reign really um, in the gardens and so on and so forth. So we, we're not looking at the individualized quarantine, but more as a group. Um, but it, it might be, it might end up being a good short week for them um, where they have time to focus and, and prepare because the prelims start immediately at the beginning of the, of, the, of the term. So those matric girls and boys who do not return during the, uh, the, the holidays for quarantining will then, in other words, um, do their prelim uh, exam for the first two weeks uh, of, the, of the term in, in the quarantine site. So, uh, so we will keep a um, Manyan house available so that they have a comfortable place where they can where they can do the exams as well. So it's not a train slash if they arrive later, um, and um, that it just means that they will be doing the prelim exam in quarantine. Then um, uh, the, the monastery is our other quarantine site, so when uh, the Manana House is being taken up again as a boarding facility later in the term, um, th those uh, over-boarded uh, pupils who need to be quarantined will then be quarantined um, at the monastery. Um, and we will offer them um, online schooling while they are, they are there. Um, they could even be visited by, by teachers if, if need be. Um, but that's our site. So if, if uh, pupils return before the end of, of, of the holidays, which is possible for us, we can do that. Um, it means that, that they could start um, with everybody else or maybe only a week later. Um, it depends on the timing. Um, but for those who arrive at the beginning of term, um, at the end of August, it means that that's those first two weeks will be um, will be either in Manana House or it will be at the at the monastery. Thank you, Brendan. Thanks, Ellen. Um, so, as as with the other two schools, we've had Tiger's House uh, cleared as a quarantine facility for over border children. Um, we only expect to return. 15 overboarder children, which is our total complement. We do have an additional six potential new boys who may arrive, and all of those can be accommodated in Tigers if required. Um, if parents choose to return during the holidays, we will be able to accommodate the boys at Tigers or and parents at the Grand Hotel if they have to quarantine. Um, and so the facilities are there and available whether you return during the holidays or at term time, if you have older siblings and you want to uh, coincide your return with, with the older children as well. So fully prepared and ready for whenever folk do arrive. Thanks very much, Brendan. And um, Yanni, we've had a, a few questions around um, uh, medical uh, processes um, and you know what what happens if a if a child gets sick you know what are the SAN um, resources and uh, how do we if, if it were a non-COVID medical emergency what do we do 
Um, do you mind just touching on that? Then I'll carry on answering some of these that are, are popping up on the uh, Q&A list here. Yeah, um, we, we can describe, certainly describe what we've seen um, in the last term. Um, so our, our medical protocols are described in our, in our, 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 medic, our, our health and wellness protocol that we published in the beginning of the term. Um, but we, we've seen this term that we, we had very few pe pupils coming through this, the sanatorium, funny enough. Um, so flu and colds have also been down. Um, but there is a protocol that we follow. So when we pick up a, a, a symptom that, that could be a, a COVID-related symptom, uh, the, all, the, all the staff and, and, and pupils are screened every day. Um, and those, that screening routine looks at, at, at any symptoms that might flag a, a concern. Then um, a child will be taken to the to the quarantine site, um, which in the last term was Manana House, but uh, for the term going forward, it, it will be the sanatorium, and they await the doctor to um, to look in, into it. Um, our school doctor will then make a call um, to whether um, whether a test is necessary. So if the symptoms are more severe and there's a concern, then then a test will be done. Um, otherwise, um, a, a child with with symptoms will be quarantined um, and will be will be kept there for the for the mandatory time. Um, we are now in a situation, I think, not only in our own country but worldwide, where testing is not just randomly done because the test um, equipment is, is quite scarce. So unless we see we, we have a real concern for a child's health, um, we are um, we are dealing with it without do, without doing a test. Um, and we then will identify close contacts um, and um, and also um, quarantine them. So um, it did happen in the last term that that we um, monitored some very mild symptoms uh, for a day or so, and the doctors were happy for children to return back into the into their house again. Um, and we've I think we've learned a lot about you know how to how to manage that. Um, so we we haven't seen. Um, any, uh, not a single a child with with more severe symptoms than a, a mild fluy sort of um, symptoms, um, and then uh, for you know for for more for any other other um, situation, we have our sanatorium. We um, also have extra nurses that be appointed, um, so we're able to to monitor uh, our people through really well, and and our school doctors come through daily. Um, we are also, you know, still able to take um, children to hospital in Port Elizabeth if, if need be. Um, you know, there is a, this perception that it's absolutely a, a no-go, um, but the truth is that, that there are still um, facilities in those hospitals, you know, for, for an emergency. The, the ER still, still operates, um, so if we have something like a, an injury or so on, we still um, have options to take children to hospital. Thanks very much, Yanni. And um, one of the one of the issues that we are dealing with, of course, is the um, conversations around sudden closure. And we there there are a number of scenarios there that might um, might pan out. Firstly, independent schools have been given scope to operate um, to their own um, terms and their own um, uh, own uh, phasing of grades. And so the, there is a possibility that if government schools are closed, then um, the, the um, independent schools could um, carry on. And we believe there to be a, a reasonable chance of that. We'll know that a bit later, of course. Um, but should there be, a, a, we don't believe, well, by, by September, when by end of August, when we're giving the final um, instructions as to opening, we would have a much clearer picture of what the trajectory of this pandemic looks like. We would have a much clearer idea as to what was expected in terms of um, the, the, the term ahead, in terms of what the external factors are going to look like. And so we would um, work a, according to, to, to those um, uh, advice, or we'd give that advice before people set off to, to come uh, back down uh, to Grahamstown. Um, Yanni, I'm going to uh, get back to my, I, I'm answering all these Q's and A's in, um, in real time if I can. Um, before, I, before, before I get back to the Q&A, Yanni, um, I'll ask you to just chat about matric exams and options about writing matric exams 
um, Cambridge A levels and and so on. But just from the emailed questions, I'm just going to go through a quick a quick burst of answers as as I can, and that might uh, answer some of the questions that are coming up on the on the on the on the ticker. So obviously, the one question was: there's a, a biggest concern is is sending kids get, having kids travel in a pandemic and. Um, we can we can obviously give no guarantees, and we don't know where this uh, pandemic is going. We'd we'd need parents to to work with us to make sure that they're making the right decision. We're not going to try and force people into a decision that's not right for them. And um, in terms of uh, South African hospitals, uh, South African hospitals, I think, well, most hospitals in the world are, are stretched, um, but we we certainly do have, um, as Yanni mentioned, experience of non-COVID emergencies. Um, being admitted into hospitals without problems, and um, the the one question that came through: What happens if if an overboarded child gets COVID and their parents are are, are not in the country? Our experience um, from the, the the positives and the the various um, uh, cases that we've we've dealt with have that they've been mild, very mildly symptomatic, easy to manage, and of course in our sanatoriums we have. Uh, some pretty sophisticated equipment in terms of um, the, the oxygen testing and the oxygen provision uh, and our own doctors on call. So um, we are, are fairly confident that, look, we're not equipped to treat a really serious uh, medical case, but um, certainly the type of cases that we've been seeing children of that age getting, um, we believe um, they are almost always uh, mildly symptomatic. And in terms of what does the 14-day quarantine look like, um, because we are cohorting the boys and the girls, they would be staying together, and um, so not, uh, not boys and girls together, but they would be staying together as a group, and um, they would exercise together, they would be able to share meals together, go online and do lessons if it's during term time together. So it's not... It's not um, it's not the, the, the strict quarantine. You know, if we have a close contact that we are quarantining, they are in their own quarters, and that can be quite, um, can be quite um, um, lonely um, because uh, they're not allowed to mix with other, other children. And um, the one other question that came about um, uh, matric students, so, so obviously, we are looking to, we, we haven't had clarity from the IAB as to where and what the matric system would look like if, if the matrics were writing uh, in their home country. But the IAB have said very clearly that they do recognize, yeah. they see the problem and they are, are working on it and uh, would work with a, a host school um, if, if they could. The, the, they have to get permission to do that from our certification body, Umalusi. And... Um, yeah. So, so Yanni, would you mind just picking up on that while I while I head to the the um, the board here? Yeah. Um, yes. Um, with with regard to exams, um, firstly the the prelim exams coming up now. Um, I've just spoken to to Petra against now before before she left, um, and she said to me to to tell parents that. Um, in principle, um, if if exams are ne needed to be written from home, so if you can't travel for some reason, um, the IB um, has um, stated that it, it's, it would be possible to do that from home, um, both for the prelim exams and for the final exams. So they will provide the the protocols for that um, and and make it possible for and it describe just what the conditions for that would be and and, and would have to be. Um, so obviously it's first price to be able to write your exam at school because we are rigged for it. We've got the venues and we can put everything in place and it's just much, much simpler. But um, the, main, the main message is that it's, it's, it's possible you know, and it will be made possible because there will be most likely a couple of thousand children who would, or hundred children who, who might have to do, do their, their exams um, at home. Um, and that also goes for the finals. Um, the dates, so the timetable for the exam um, is dependent on the the bigger uh, education department um, and Malusi. So um, the IEB has to follow that. Um, so unfortunately, if if the state um, system, the state uh, government uh, education department decides that because the year was so disrupted that they will um, write their matric exams later, 
then the IB will have to follow that. And the, the exams will also have to be later. Um, but in terms of the logistics of the exams, I think they've done a lot of thinking already about how they would do it if it's, if it's necessary. Um, then um, I think similarly in principle um, with the, the A-level exams and the Cambridge exams, I know we, we have got grade 11s and 12s who are writing um, some of those Cambridge exams right now um, in, in our current cycle of exams. Um, and they have given um, you know, instructions about wh what the protocol should be around that. So I think again, um, you know, the, the, the Cambridge is, is obviously aware of the situation that got, got students around the world um, and we are not in a dissimilar position to any other school around the world. Um, so those protocols should be in place. Um, Alan, while you're while you, um, getting ready, um, I, I just had a thought when you talked about the the question of um, when when someone gets uh, tested positive, you know, what are we able to hold that child? And I think the important thing to understand is that our health protocols are designed with the logic and the, the rationale that we are set up and we have prepared with everything um, to make it possible for us to hold a child who is sick um, for as long as is needed um, uh, for parents to, to, to come into the into the loop. So in some cases, just with any Ill, other illness, um, a child gets ill, um, we hold them in the sand and we, and we nurse them and they get better again and they can go back to school without parents having to necessarily come in. Um, but with, with anything else, um, there's at any point in that cycle, um, a parent is, is obviously um, most welcome to, 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 take, to, to hold the child further. So um, parents who are close by you know, will, will, will maybe um, you know, come in much sooner and parents are further uh, much later. But the important thing is that we are we are rigged for the for the entire process so that we can really hold a child right through the, the illness. Excellent. Thank you. Brendan, um, any any um, anything to add there? And, and I think Ellen exactly the same at prep. I mean we uh, we have professional nurses on hand, we have the doctor's advice, and so Exactly as Yanni says, um, as we identify children, so we can hold them at school for as long as required. Um, most of the, well, the two parents who have had boys who have been uh, identified as COVID positive cho have chosen to take them home. We have quarantined successfully the first time um, seven boys, and many of you will know that we've got a group of grade six boys in quarantine currently, uh, only four of them who are direct contacts and um, all of them asymptomatic and um, just a, a note to parents here is that it's preferable for your boys not to go into quarantine at school because they don't want to come out of quarantine at school um, it turns into some sort of a bed and breakfast luxury experience for them so not a good idea to quarantine at school um, but we can facilitate children obviously we follow the medical advice and if there is a need for hospitalization that would be that would be followed Good. Um, there are some questions here that um, I can't really answer. The, the, the one question is um, when the South African visa section will open. Um, we don't know of, um, so we don't know the answer to that. And um, then um, the, the a question just in, in an event a, a child uh, gets COVID and is ill, uh, would the overboard parent be able to travel immediately and what would the possibilities be? Well, we have had experience of parents traveling freely on the permits that um, we've given as, um, uh, you know, uh, parents coming to collect children. So we'd expect that to be the case, but I'd have to do some more research on that um, because I don't know, um, I can't give exactly what the detail is. And then um, the one question around are COVID positive cases treated at school and not sent off to government uh, facility? The answer is yes. Uh, we've got isolation facilities in the school where we can uh, manage those. And um, that's worked quite well uh, with the, the cases that we've had. So um, that um, brings us just to the, the last point on the agenda. And then I'll just uh, check with Yanni and Brendan that they might want to add 
um, something different. Um, but in terms of the online learning, um, we, well, I think I've touched on this already. We, we, we are committed to it until such time as everybody's had a fair chance uh, to be back and there is some stability uh, and predictability to the process. So please, as you're listening to this, we, we are, uh, we, we're very pleased with the way that this term has gone thus far. The number of variables are still enormous and so lots can, can happen and a day is a very long time in this business, but from what we've seen in the way that we've managed uh, the various uh, challenges that have come our way, we're quite um, comfortable that, uh, that we, we have a good plan for the new term and that the students who have been here have derived value, but we are, are, are really anxious to make sure that the, the students who still can't get here still derive maximum value and that um, when things normalize, they, they come back and are ready to, to take off and haven't had any sort of academic disadvantage. So um, what, what we found really helpful is, is good, timeliest communication. So please don't, don't uh, sit and dwell on things. Uh, if, you, if you do have um, questions, uh, please do feel um, absolutely free to, to just fire off an email to Brendan, to Yanni, or to myself. Um, and um, and uh, we'll, we'll um, uh, get back to you quickly because I think we need to keep the communication open. And similarly, uh, as you hear things, we, we, we um, have been, we've been given some really good leads as we've picked up stuff from what you've heard from your um, various um, local uh, South African uh, high commissions and so on. And so if you can feed that back to us uh, as much as as much as possible. We've, we've had a couple of, of, of questions on the ticker here around quarantine and how long is quarantine um, supposed to be? And there has been some variability around that. So um, it was 14 days and there was talk of making it uh, seven days and then they're talking about 10 days. Um, and there is some talk about if you come from certain countries, there is no quarantine required at all. And so we would, we would do what we believe to be is in the child's best interest. We don't want to take shortcuts uh, because things can get out of hand if we do that. And we don't want to be um, cumbersome and, and, and uh, unrealistic in terms of if, if national regulations and our medical panel uh, agree on certain things, we would certainly uh, adhere to that. What we don't want to do is to get caught up where people are making decisions for political reasons, um, and that's not in the child's best interest. So we do check what the national regulations are saying. We check that against what our doctor panel is telling us, and um, and we we uh, work you know accordingly. Yanni, am I right? Eh? Yes, um, Alan. I, I think one of the things that I I think we should maybe just talk about and, and mention is um, what we do know at this stage um, would be required for for, um, for students to return, you know, in terms of of, um, of permitting and documentation that they might need um, when they when they travel. I'm not sure whether we we, we shared what, what we do know. Um, do you want to talk about that or, or should I just mention what, what I ahead. know? Yeah, go ahead. So, so I think again to go back to the principle that you know we don't know everything, and it's it's difficult to get all the all the answers from from government officials and so on. But we do. But what we what we do know, we take on board and we prepare for that. So I do know that, for instance, um, uh, students will need a letter from the school confirming that they are enrolled here and that the school is functioning and that they are required to be back at, at a certain time. So we will be able to 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 release that for for parents. I do know that we will. Um, we will, according to some of the things I read, um, need to produce uh, or to give parents a document that confirms that um, our quarantine sites have been approved by the Department of Health as as um, as international quarantine sites. We've got those certifications, and we can we, we can produce those. Um, we probably will have to do uh, we'll have to um, make a document available that um, confirms that that private schools um, have been granted um, permission to deviate from the from the grade return sort of schedule of the government schools because we are deviating. Government schools still haven't got all their grades back 
allowed back and depending on what they decide next um you know we might have to to, to provide you with that documentation which we've got that said that independent schools can deviate from that um, and then in south africa we we also know that our local um, uh, families had to have two um, travel permits with them wherever they they drove um, you know, when they came back to school um, these are called um, permit uh, form form a 3a and form 3b those are just travel permits so we'll we'll produce that as well and then we also know that that um, we probably have to have list a list um, of our students on a on you know in, in, in transit so that at an airport they've got a list and know that they don't send um, them off to a, to a government quarantine site and with with other passengers and so on so we we know that that we need to we, that we will need to produce um, a number of documentation that uh, documents and documentation that you will need to travel with and we will obviously provide that um, in good time so that you've got what you need um, on you and then added to that are, are the obvious things like passports and um, and study study visas and so on Fantastic. Um, thank you so much. Um, we have recorded this, so um, I'm getting a, a comment here about um, bad internet connections. So the answer is yes. Uh, we'll put this um, recording up as uh, sometime during the course of tomorrow morning once it's uh, been um, uh, processed and downloaded uh, from, from Zoom. Um, is it possible to transit at OR Tambo to PE without quarantine? Yes, uh, we've been told that it is. Um, and um, there's a question here about uh, chartering a, a flight. So, so that question I think relates to the fact that if you, if because you're chartering a flight, you have a, a minimum number that makes it um, viable. Uh, so, if you were to Get the matrix back for their two-week quarantine. The the um, the rest of the other grades would need to come with them, and that's fine. We can certainly house um, those other grades. And um, as I've answered in one of the previous um, uh, queries, uh, there will be staff on site and staff supervision and and a program uh, to to make you know the day. Um, activities and, and things to, to do during the course of the day. So um, we will um, give some more detail for that, but uh, we do understand that if you're chartering a flight, you do need to um, fill it up. Good, so um, I, I think I'll, I'll go through these uh, ones that I haven't answered um, in, in detail and try and, try and get the um, uh, question. I'll try and get those answers out uh, tomorrow. Um, but uh, and we'll need to, to get some advice about what we do about an expired study visa um, because I, I don't know what what the answer is. And then um, the question around uh, if students are allowed to enter South Africa but you choose to keep them at home until January, there will be a point where um, there is a, 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 th a, a a number of students at school that means uh, it, it won't be possible to offer the online curriculum but um, we would we'd give a notice of our intentions in that regard so as as things stand uh, while people can't get back the online carries on um, we do uh, running the two the, the online and the uh, on campus is an extremely demanding uh, task and so um, by the time we're able to resolve, uh, resume some sort of normality, uh, we will uh, give notice that we intend to make the change, but it won't happen uh, without uh, the right sort of notice. Yanni, anything uh, to, to wrap up? Um, no, I think, I think maybe my take home, my take home thought is, um, a concern that that parents might have being so far away from from here and watching the news and um, trying to understand what it is like at the moment in South Africa um, with this pandemic really gaining momentum very quickly um, and the answer to that is that it, it is actually quite dire in, in a country but 
that, um, as I said right in the beginning, that we as a boarding school are, could probably not be in a better position um, than we are. Um, just in this week, I phoned around uh, the country to some, some of my ex-colleagues and to hear what's going on in schools around the country. Um, in Cape Town and Joburg and so on, and I was very pleasantly surprised to re to, to realize how um, effectively and efficiently we were able to do school because we are a full boarding school. Um, we we you know if I listen to some of the some of the people from other schools, we almost sound like we live on a different planet um, because we've had we've been able to do school fairly normally. We've been able to do some sport. We've had kids in class. We've had all our grades back. Um, and for day schools in, in particular, um, in city schools, it's very difficult to do that. So they've had a very disrupted uh, second term where um, we had our audience arrive and we had them captured and we could do school in a, almost a, in, a, in a small village here um, on, on the two campuses. Um, and that's a real luxury. So for parents who are concerned about the health side of things, um, I can assure you that our protocols and our policies for on-campus living um, and how we hedge them from from the the, the risks that are out there um, has really been very very good and and we are very confident about that. Good, thank you so much, uh, Brendan. Any any closing comments from your side? I don't know, just think to echo what Jani has said about um, the normality of school at Prep, um, and also to let those parents of Grade Seven boys know that we are. Um, in negotiations with Amakala to have the Amakala experience at the end of the year and we are looking at how to hold feast in the best possible way so that uh, the traditions can conclude at the end of the year and the boys get a good experience. Thank you and of course journey as as we are planning now journey goes ahead. Um, we are looking and, and obviously we, we, we will um, have to make those assessments as uh, the time gets closer but looking to bring into the third term whatever things we can that have been lost and i'm thinking about things like matric dances and um, various ways of doing balloon week it's not going to be balloon week as we have uh, traditionally understood it but uh, it will you know we'll bring in as much as we can so um we we are we meet um, at least once a week, probably twice a week, in in um, in assessing the various uh, conditions as they're changing around us. And uh, our our overriding objective is to do everything that we possibly can to give as much value to our boys and our girls, but to do it in such a way that doesn't compromise on their on their own uh, safety and well-being. So um, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Please do uh, look in. Look out for your email as we begin emailing uh, various things to you during the course of the next uh, week or so. And um, there will be some general back to school correspondence and uh, obviously the various letters and permits and things that um, uh, you would need as well as the um, contact people at um, OR Tembo and the Department of Health that we've been dealing with. Uh, we'll share those uh, with you as well. So uh, thank you very much. Please don't hesitate to contact us uh, should you need to, and uh, we will um, schedule as many of these as we need to in order to to get uh, as as close to you as we can. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Bye bye.